This video will take you through your A-level flip learning topic, which is about the regulation of blood glucose levels. In order to understand the regulation of blood glucose, we need to understand a little bit about homeostasis. Homeostasis is the process whereby cells or organisms are able to maintain a stable internal environment despite changes to the external environment. If we think about it, um, the external environment, such as the amount of water, so the water potential, or the concentration of solutes like glucose, or the temperature, or the pH, um, these all change all the time, and the cell needs mechanisms in order to keep these um, stable, in order to allow metabolic reactions to take place. The way homeostasis takes place is through a process called negative feedback. Now, negative feedback is where a change in the, in the environment such as a change in water potential or temperature, would act as a stimulus. This causes the, a ch um, the change to be detected and the, the organism to respond to restore the system back to normal. So the stimulus is the change in the environment. This has to be detected by a receptor and communicated to a communication system, which is always the nerves or hormones. The communication system connects with the effector, which is a muscle or a gland, and this leads to a response which corrects or reverses the change. Blood glucose levels are controlled by two different hormones. These hormones are secreted by um, particular sections of the pancreas called the islets of Langerhans. These are collections of cells that are scattered throughout the pancreas. And inside the islet, we have two types of cells. We have beta cells that secrete insulin, which is a hormone, and alpha cells that secrete glucagon. And these hormones work together to regulate blood glucose levels. So let's look at negative feedback and blood glucose regulation. After a meal, your, um, any carbohydrates in your food will be digested and absorbed and will lead to an increase in blood glucose. This is the stimulus that is detected by the beta cells in the pancreas and leads to the beta cells secreting insulin into the blood. The insulin is the hormone that travels in the blood and it goes to liver and muscle cells and it causes those cells to respond in such a way that they are able to take up glucose from the blood so blood glucose levels fall and are restored back to normal. On the other hand, when blood glucose falls, for example, after a period of fasting, so blood glucose decreases, and this is detected by your alpha cells in the pancreas. This causes the alpha cells to secrete glucagon hormone into the blood, and glucagon hormone acts on liver cells, which causes them to respond in such a way that they release glucose into the blood, and this increases blood glucose levels back to normal. So if we look at how blood glucose concentration will change during a day, for example, we can see that if blood glucose levels fall too low, this leads to the secretion of glucagon and blood glucose levels increase. If blood glucose levels go too high, this will lead to secretion of insulin and this causes blood glucose to fall again. And if it falls too low, we get glucagon being produced, which increases blood glucose. So your blood glucose levels don't stay constant, they will fluctuate within normal levels over the course of the day, depending on your level of activity and what you eat. Now we're going to look in a bit more detail as to how insulin and glucagon cause those responses. In order to understand that, we need to think a little bit about where the glucose comes from um, in our bodies and what could happen to it. So if we have a lot of glucose in our cells, for example, which has come from, from food, um, this glucose will be digested and absorbed and it will go to the liver for processing and high levels of glucose in the liver or muscle cells, what can happen to is it, it can be respired, so it can go into glycolysis and be produced, turned into pyruvate and then obviously go into the Krebs cycle and um, the link reaction. Um, alternatively, glucose can be stored, so glucose can be converted into glycogen by a process known as glycogenesis. 
This means that the glucose can be stored as glycogen in the liver for when it's needed later. On the other hand, if glucose levels fall too low, um, the body can respond to increased blood glucose levels. For example, um, some fats or proteins can be converted into pyruvate and from pyruvate it can be converted into glucose, so increasing blood glucose levels. Or glycogen can be hydrolyzed, it can be broken back down into glucose by a process known as glycogenolysis. All these processes inside the cells are carried out by enzymes. So just a quick recap of those terms. Glycolysis, this is the breaking down of glucose, which is the first stage of respiration, so that is a way of lowering blood glucose levels. Glycogenesis is where glucose is um, glucose monomers are condensed to form glycogen, so we're making um, glycogen from glucose. They would both lower glucose levels inside a cell. Um, if we needed to increase glucose levels, we could make glucose by a process called gluconeogenesis from other substrates. Or we can hydrolyze glycogen back into its glucose monomers by a process called glycogenolysis. So if we go back to thinking about our negative feedback loop um, for regulating blood glucose, we said that if blood glucose goes too high, beta cells detect the rise in the blood glucose and respond by secreting insulin into the bloodstream. Insulin travels to the target tissue and now the detail of what actually happens when insulin reaches the target tissue is on the plasma membranes of the liver and muscle cells there are specific insulin receptors on the plasma membranes. So insulin binds to these receptors and it causes the cells to respond in a number of different ways. The main way is it increases the number of glucose transport proteins in the plasma membrane of the cells. So this now allows glucose to diffuse out of the blood into the liver and muscle cells. Once it's into the cells, a number of things can happen. Firstly, some glucose could be converted to glycogen by glycogenesis. More glucose can be respired or um, some glucose could be converted into fat. All of these processes lower the amount of glucose present. On the other hand, if blood glucose goes too low, we said that alpha cells can detect a fall in the blood glucose here. They respond by secreting glucagon into the blood, which goes in the bloodstream to the liver cells. The glucagon then binds to receptors, so specific glucagon receptors that are found on the plasma membranes of the liver cells. And this causes the liver cells to change um, or respond in such a way that it leads to enzymes being activated and these enzymes will carry out processes such as um, glycogenolysis, so breaking down glycogen into glucose, um, converting fats and amino acids into glucose or respiring other molecules than glucose to conserve glucose and all of these processes will lead to an increase in blood glucose levels. So what do you need to know? Make sure you can define the key terms that we've covered in this presentation, so homeostasis, negative feedback, insulin glucagon, glycolysis, gluconeogenesis, glycogenesis and glycogenolysis. And make sure that you can learn the detail of how insulin and glucagon act on the liver and muscle cells to bring about the changes that we've described. Some questions you're likely to get, so first of all a simple one, what is homeostasis? Straightforward definition, maintaining a constant internal environment. Another one, this has given you a little bit of a feedback loop and it's asking you um, some questions, some detail about it. So it's fall in blood glucose and it asks you which hormone is going to be secreted in response to this fall in blood glucose. So that should be um, glucagon. And it's asking you which organ is going to be um, acted on by glucagon. This will be um, the liver. The other part of the question which is missing off this slide asks you to explain what is meant by a negative feedback loop. Here it's a straightforward definition that they're asking for. 
So a change to the normal level initiates a response which reduces the effect or reverses or acts against the change. This is another question that asks you to describe the role of the hormone glucagon in the control of blood sugar concentration for four marks. So it's going back to the detail of what happens when glucagon is released. So note there's no marks here for um, describing how glucagon is released or that it's tra transported in the blood. You go straight in, glucagon binds to the receptor on the muscle or liver cell. This causes enzymes to be activated which lead to the hydrolysis of glycogen or glycogenolysis and then glucose can diffuse out of the liver cells um, leading to an increase in blood glucose levels. Similar question here, describe how insulin reduces the concentration of glucose in the blood. So again, we're straight into insulin's already in the blood. It binds to specific receptors on membranes of liver or muscle cells. It activates carrier proteins or increases the number of carrier proteins in the plasma membrane. This allows um, glucose to diffuse from the blood into the cells and because the cells have become more permeable to glucose and once the glucose is inside the cells then glucose can be stored as glycogen um, by the process of glycogenesis.